So what's got you awake tonight? So I know it's been a while since I last put a video together, and rest assured, I have a very good reason for that. Part of it had to do with getting back into the routine of a 40-hour work week after nine months, which I tell you is a very good thing. The other part, though, had more to do with just my overall state of mind, which in terms of being a good thing, yeah, not so much. Now, like a lot of people in the world, when I say a lot, I mean about 350 million people worldwide per the last estimates of the World Health Organization, I deal with some forms of depression. Now, in my case, I was diagnosed with both severe clinical depression and post-traumatic stress disorder following a complete nervous breakdown in 2011, but in actuality, it's something I've known about in one form or another for about the last 30 years. Now, one of the biggest issues I have with my particular version of it is that as much as I try to be an extroverted personality, when it really gets going, my depression can turn me into a very, very introverted human being. And as a creative person, I can't tell you how frustrating it is to have the motivation to do something like, I don't know, take time to work on my novel, have some fun with my camera, or write record and edit a vlog, dissipate like a puff of smoke because this constant drum beat in the back of your mind that just keeps telling you one simple thing, which is you can't do it because nobody gives a damn. It doesn't matter how good you think it is, nobody else is gonna give a damn, so there's really no point in even trying. Now the logical question, of course, is, is that if my depression is that bad, why haven't I done something about it sooner? Well, it is certainly not for lack of trying, I promise you that. Obviously the biggest and most fundamental problem in that is that for the better part of the last decade, I only had access to health care for about a year. Either the companies I worked for didn't offer it, I didn't work there long enough to qualify for it, or, hate to say it, but they didn't pay me enough money that I could go out and buy it on my own. But fortunately, I could finally do something about it this year. This arrived in my mailbox the end of last week is the health insurance that I was able to get through the Affordable Care Act. Now, unfortunately, I don't know for certain how long I'm going to have it. That's going to depend on what happens with the Supreme Court later on this summer. But for now, I can happily say, I already have things in motion so I can get ahead of my depression rather than just continuing to have to kick that can down the road and dealing with as best I can when things get really bad. Which brings me, of all things, to Facebook. Now, I joined Facebook about 10 years ago as part of the mass exodus from MySpace. In that time, from my perspective, it's gone from being the place that I can connect and reconnect with people into what a lot of social media has really become in that span. That is just a big facade. Now, you take a look at any of your friends' Facebook pages, and I'm willing to bet good money that there's going to be a point where you will start feeling those twinges of jealousy for whatever reason. They may be doing something like going on a vacation and you haven't gone for a while. They might be in a relationship that seems really, really positive and you may have just come out of one or you may have been single for a while and really haven't been able to find that person and get your own relationships going. Or there is going to be something else which signifies to you that their lives at the moment are a lot better than yours. Now, for most of us, we're able to shake that stuff off and focus on more important things. You let it roll. You realize that what is on social media does not exactly signify absolutely everything that is accurate and factual about a person's life. But we are competitive as both a species and as a culture, and reflexively measuring yourself against the successes of other people when you've had your own perceived failures does not really help your own self-image or your self-worth. Now, for myself, one of my biggest problems is that my depression feeds off of both the envy and the animosity that it itself fosters. So it makes it even harder to build anything in terms of lasting friendships or even attempt possible new relationships. The simple answer is, after 10 years of being plugged into Facebook, I came to the conclusion that I was becoming a very, very bitter and unmotivated person because Judging my own facade that I had created on my Facebook page, it paled in comparison to what I saw everybody else was doing. So to that end, I did the most proactive thing I thought I could do. Last week, I finally unplugged from Facebook. Now being a part of the last generation who will ever know what it's like to have lived without the internet, 
I figure I can do better than spending up to 12 hours a day looking at a page or updating feeds or writing to chat with people who obviously do not have the time because they are able to unplug when I can't. And the good news is I have. I've been starting to read books again. I've been getting out and doing more photography. I got my web page finally built after 15 years of trying to get that up and rolling. I managed to do that in less than a week. So it's already starting to pay dividends and I know the withdrawals are going to be coming sooner or later, but for right now, I'm okay being able to live without being a part of Facebook 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, does that mean at some point I won't go back to Facebook? Sure, I'll go back to it eventually, but for right now, the important thing is recognizing that for me, it's just not a healthy environment to be in. So once I can get going with my therapy and hopefully figuring out the tools I need to start changing the way I think, so a lot of the negatives that I get out of Facebook aren't there anymore, then hopefully I can interact with people on a more healthy basis. It'll be better for me, it'll be better for them. But until then, I just have to be able to keep, away, keep my distance from it. Now, if you ask a hundred people the best way to deal with depression, somehow you're gonna end up with at least 101 different answers. But the bottom line is, you have to be willing to do something. Because if my experience with my depression has taught me anything, depression at its core, is really a paralytic. It would rather you did nothing and it will fight you every single time that you feel compelled to want to do something. What makes it easier to convince yourself to do something is one, having the means by which to start taking action and then also understanding and recognizing those triggers which you can learn to avoid so your depression does not start getting the better of you. Now, in the week since I've gotten my insurance again, I've already set up doctor's appointments that are going to get started in about the first week of May. And to be honest, I really don't miss Facebook all that much. So in the grand scheme of things, I'd like to think I'm doing okay. Now, if you're somebody who goes on to social media a lot but doesn't get anything emotionally positive out of it, do yourself a favor. Try unplugging for a while. See if that helps you start feeling better. The great thing about Facebook and social media in general is that it's connected us in a way that until now, we've never really been able to experience before. And that's a positive thing, but at the same time, it's important to recognize those moments when it can become a negative, and when it becomes a negative, you just have to be willing to walk away from it for a bit. The nice thing, though, is that you always know the next time you load your computer up, it's always going to be there waiting for you. That said, it's nice to be back, but it's late. So do yourself a favor. Get some sleep.